Hi everyone, my name is Justin, and in this tutorial I will show you how to open SPSS, open a data set, browse variables, and run frequencies. We'll begin by opening SPSS. Under the Start menu, click on All Programs, and look for the folder called IBM SPSS Statistics. In this folder, select IBM SPSS Statistics, either 19 or 20, or whichever version is currently installed on your computer. I'm going to use SPSS 20 for this tutorial. A dialog box will appear when you first open the program. With this dialog box, you can choose to open recent files, or you can browse your files from this window. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this window for now. In this tutorial, we'll be using Ipsos Reads 2011 Federal Election Exit Poll. I'll show you how you can open this data set if you're using a computer connected to Wilfrid Laurier University's network. First, click on File, and then you can click on Open, and select Data. Once the Open Data dialog box appears, look for the X drive from the drop-down list. Under the X drive, open the Lizpop folder, and then you can go ahead and open 2011 Ipsos Election Survey. You can then open the .sav file. Before we continue, we should set SPSS options so that variables are displayed alphabetically. To do this, click on Edit, select Options, and then make sure that you have the General tab selected. In the top left-hand corner, under Variable Lists, select Display Names, and then select Alphabetical. You can then go ahead and click OK. Now in order to browse the variables, we're going to want to click on Utilities, and then select Variables. Now this tool has two parts. First, on the left hand side is an alphabetical list of all variables contained in the data set. Second, when you move your cursor over a variable name, the window on the right displays information about it. This information includes data labels, missing values, the measurement level, as well as value labels. Now you may also want to download the code book, which will allow you to see the exact same information here. In order to download the codebook, you can find it by going back to the folder where you downloaded the data set under the X drive. Before concluding, we're going to produce a frequency distribution. One of the steps in data analysis is to produce frequency distributions. To do this in SPSS, we're going to click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequency. From the list, select the variable that you wish to examine. In this particular example, I'm going to be looking at question 1. In order to select this variable, I'm going to need to click on the arrow button in the middle of the dialog box. Clicking on the arrow in the center of the dialog box moves the selected variable to the second box, titled Variables. We then need to ensure that the box beside Display Frequency Tables is selected. If it is, I can then click OK. Your frequency distribution table will then be displayed in an output file, similar to this one here. Now SPSS can also produce univariate statistics through a similar process as producing frequency distributions. So in order to do this, we'll go back up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. From the list of variables, select the one that you wish to examine. You can then click on the arrow in the center of the dialog box to move the selected variable to the second box titled Variable. I'm going to look at question 1 again. When you're ready, you can click on Statistics, and the measures of central tendency and dispersion are listed in separate boxes. You'll want to select the appropriate measures based on the level of measurement of the variable that you have chosen. Once you have made your selection, you can click Continue. In this example, I'm going to select Mode as the central tendency because I'm using a nominal level variable. I can then go ahead and click Continue. 
and I'll be returned to the output dialog box. You'll notice that this time my statistics were also included in the output file. The mode has a value of 1. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like anything here has a value of 1. I have yes, I have I already voted in an advance poll, and I have no, not yet. So in order to figure out what that 1 represents, we're going to have to look at the values for the coded variable. You'll notice that question 1 is the seventh variable on this data set when listed alphabetically. You can look and see what number 1 is coded as by clicking on these three dots under the values column. It looks like 1 is coded as yes. Going back to my output file, I now know that 1, meaning yes, is the most frequently occurring response to this question. Now if you want to save your output file, you can do this by going to File, clicking Save As, and then selecting the folder that you want to save the output file in. That concludes this tutorial. If you'd like to see more tutorials, you can visit our website at lizpop.ca. You can also leave us a comment here on our YouTube channel. And you can also follow us on Twitter at LaurierInst. I'm Justin, and I'll see you next time.